Hey, what's going on, Prime Timers? April 2020 was an amazing month here at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. The top 10 sales totaled $2,148. So we're going to go over each and every one of those right now, starting at number 10. And it's this one here. You may remember it because I recently did a video about it. I'm not going to go over all of that again. In fact, I'm actually going to show you the original footage from when I found it in 2018. I mentioned that in this video here, the secret word that could bring in huge profits. So make sure you go check out that video if you want to learn the secret word. Um, but uh, it uh, relates to something we see here, which is these animals doing human-like things. And, um, you know, there's also other examples of non-animal creatures doing human-like things that are also important to look for. And I talk about that in the other video. Here, you could see the animals are doing, you know, all sorts of cool stuff and wearing all sorts of things that humans would typically wear. And it's all centered around this billiards table. Uh, billiards, by the way, is a great, great um, a theme to look out uh, for things on, uh, all sorts of collectibles related to pool and billiards. And whenever you could integrate something like uh, animals, things people really love uh, into billiards, you're going to have a good selling item there, especially if it's big and it's bright and it's colorful uh, like this. Uh, this is the video where I found it. Uh, you could see here, uh, this is house and I'm walking right in. If any of you uh, remember this one, if any longtime prime time let me know that in the comment section. I will uh, crack up if uh, if some of you remember this. So brings you back down memory lane. And this is what I want you to pay attention to. There it is. Right there on that back wall. So a couple of things that are really critical, especially if you are new, that you need to know is you've got to look on walls. Like you can see here, this is another piece. I, I sold this one after I picked it up. The other one I just had laying around for a while. It was just light and wasn't taking a lot, up a lot of space. I just hadn't gotten around to it. It. Um, but uh, this one, you know, sold for, I don't remember exactly. I think they wanted 10 bucks for it. I made a nice profit on it. But look on walls. It's real important because not only do you have to look on walls and remember that there's a lot of people who are just focused like on the table right there. That's where their eyes go. But you got to look up look up, look down, look all around you, different angles that other people aren't looking at. And not only that, if you see something cool like that on the wall and it's affixed to it, like with staples or with screws or with nails, find a way to see if you could get that out. Is it something that you are allowed to purchase? In almost all instances, you are allowed to purchase these types of things. Typically, it would say not for sale if they weren't selling it. But now it's your challenge to find a way to get it out. And a lot of people will just walk by it because it, it's just not easy to just pull off. It's amazing what just putting a little bit of extra effort into your work will pay off big dividends. So uh, this one, I just purchased it in like in a, in a lot. I don't even remember the exact price. It was some, somewhere between like 5 and $10 or something. Uh, but again, got it in a bulk deal and um, wound up selling it for 70 bucks, like you see there. So that is the one we're going to start off with. Let's go on to uh, number nine. Now, this one is one I did not actually purchase for resale. We did get it on a state sale, but this was just uh, me and Mrs. Primetime. We're, we're taking my kids uh, around to the state sales and, you know, we're told the kids, if you see anything you like, you know, just let us know and we'll, we'll pick it up for you. So my daughter, a little Miss Primetime, and this is several years ago, uh, picked this up. She thought it looked interesting and we were doing spring cleaning and she just said she didn't want it anymore. She got her use out of it and she said, just sell it on eBay. So we actually gave her a really nice commission for, for this piece because this one wound up actually selling for $90. It's a Wizard of Oz Poly Pocket playset with 10 figures. Now this one that I have up here, this picture I have here doesn't show you all the figures. Let me show you the first picture that I put up. So this is my lead picture, real important. This is where you want to highlight all the best elements of your item right here. That first picture, you only get one chance to make that first impression. So it's really important that you make it count, especially when people are scrolling down and looking at things that they're interested in. You can see there I lined up all the characters right in front. You know, the problem is, is that if someone just scrolls down and sees this, they may not take the time to go into your listing to see if you say if you have 
the figures or not. They just are going to assume, not all of them, but some will, that you don't have it. So really make sure you emphasize it. Also, you know, anything that could be opened up, open it up, display it. So like you could see here, there's this green emerald part in the back and there's these like little houses uh, off to the side. All those things open up. Not only do they open up, but even within them, so even within that emerald part in the back, there's little cupboards and stuff that open and you could display. Display all that stuff. If it lights up, uh, make sure that you mention that uh, as well and you show a picture of it being lit up. Now, this one, um, it, it's supposed to light up, but this one actually didn't work. There's a tree in the back and you press the tree down and then that will actually light up. There's batteries that go in underneath. Uh, if the if the batteries um, worked and if it lit up, then uh, this one easily would have sold for over $100 with the figures. It still would sell without the figures and it still will sell not lighting up because there's not too many lights on it and a lot of people will just want it just for play and also just for display. Now, a little secret, I like to tell little secrets here on the channel, like the secret word. I'm going to tell you about the secret hidden compartment. Doesn't that sound mysterious? The secret hidden compartment. It's right there in that little pink house right over there. Because if you look over here, right, and you just found this, you might think, oh, okay, well, you know, it just you know, looks like a, some kind of Wizard of Oz thing, but I guess there's no figures. You ask the person, hey, are there any figures? And they might not even know, you know, where they are. They might think they're lost. You have, you, they might have no idea. But where they are kept is inside of that pink house. You have to press down on the base and then push open and inside is where all of those figures are kept. So make sure uh, that if you ever come across this, that you look inside for those figures. Always look for hidden compartments. So it's real important. So, all right, $90 sale uh, right over there. We're gonna move into the next one here. These are the AccuCut die blocks. Some of you may remember these from when I went over to the magician's house. This was the second day. If you never saw my magician estate sale videos, you have to go watch it, especially if you're new to the channel. There was an initial day, and then there was a second day where they were so overwhelmed with stuff from this guy's house that they said, everything's free. So I dropped everything I was doing. Miss Primetime saw, saw it come up on Facebook. I, I, I went out there, and uh, it just basically shows what I did in that. Like I think I had like an hour, an hour and a half to grab everything I could, and these die blocks were uh, one of the things I came across, as you can see here. Now, you can see here, there's different designs on them, and there's big ones. There's there's also small ones. These are the bigger ones. I broke them up into two lots. These I sold for $95. Didn't cost me anything. So, um, you know, just obviously, I, you can't do much better than if you're not paying anything for the, uh, you can't do any better if you're getting it for free. Can't be free. There's letters, there's numbers. Basically, uh, if I could zoom in on one of these for you, get you a little bit of a better close-up. If you haven't seen these before, they're used by crafters, teachers, uh, people in churches and stuff use them too. They're, they go inside a, a, a machine called an AccuCut machine. You can go on the AccuCut website and, and it'll show you all about it. You can watch videos and stuff, show you how it's actually done if you want to see the process. Uh, but but those little kind of silver parts within the wood, uh, those are like little cutting pieces. They're like little blades like embedded inside of them. And on the other side, there's like a rubber foam padding and that uh, helps to protect it. Um, it's kind of um, helps protect once the pieces are getting pulled out so, so fabrics and stuff don't get damaged and, and stuff like that. But they, they basically cut things in big um, lots. They could cut things to scale. So fabric pieces, designs, you can make them in bulk and stuff like that. And you could have a nice nice, clean, consistent look to things. And so, um, you know, this is just kind of random, by the way. So even if you find them random, um, they'll still sell. You know, I, it's not like I had every letter of the alphabet. Uh, you don't need it. I didn't even have really a ton of them. They're just really big and still wound up getting a 95 uh, bucks for them. Sometimes people will try to lowball you for them as they will with, uh, you know, most other items, but you just have to hold firm, uh, you know, let your uh, research, um, you know, guide you in terms of uh, standing firm in terms of, you know, what you know it should sell for. And speaking of um, standing firm, I'm going to actually show you that in a few moments with another item I showed you last month. But before I get to that, let me actually go to this one here. Uh, this one I sold for $99.50. It is the telephone. Remember that video I did? I did my little uh, my little acting skit there for you. So um, this, is, uh, this is a close-up of what I was showing you in, in the video there. 
um, and, and what I want to emphasize to you here is the cleanliness of the phone. Remember the thing I talked about uh, in that video. Where is that video? Where is that? That's the one here, right here. We're calling all resellers. Go check that out if you never saw it. One of the things I talk about in there is that the reason I was able to get this price for the phone, because there were many others uh, who have this phone listed. Uh, it's a, a, as you can see on the back here in my initial picture, it's a Western electric phone. It's model CS 500 uh, DM. Now, it, and it's and it's a white one, so color can matter as well in terms of you know what people want. But um, all the other people who had one listed before me had stickers stuck onto it that they never bothered peeling off. They had phone numbers embedded within this little dial piece in the middle. Uh, so you know that little dial piece there, that little um, you know center piece that's plastic, it pops right out, and you could just remove any kind of like phone numbers that are written in there and um, you know clean it up. Now, sometimes it's real dirty, clean it up. If you haven't seen these, by the way, if you're really young, never used one, I grew up with these things, they're called rotary phones. You stick your finger in the slot and you pull it all the way, all the way towards the zero and um, that will make the phone call. So remember, for those of you who use this, how annoying it was when you thought you brought the number, like you took the one, you thought you brought it all the way to the zero, and you didn't actually bring it all the way so it didn't register the number. That was the most annoying thing, especially if it happened at the last number, and then you had to redo it. And you, you always couldn't stand people who had phone numbers that you know had a lot of sevens and eights and nines into it. So of course, my phone number as a kid, every single number in it was a five or or, or more, every single one. And I had zeros, eights, and sevens in it. So it was just, there were three sevens in my childhood phone number. So crazy. So I was like calling the people who had like, the, there was one number by me that was popular. It was a 431 in New Jersey. So we always like calling the 431 people. Of course, I was stuck with the 577. So, oh well. Anyway, but uh, so um, uh, good item. These rotary phones, they're really popular if you ever come across them. Uh, they sell, and I talk about it more uh, in the video. But but basically, um, people are looking for these, especially right now. If people are concerned during a state of emergency that cell phones are going to go out, uh, they would want something like this as a backup. So this is why these are selling much more now than they were uh, prior to the coronavirus uh, pandemic. So this one here, this is the one I was going to tell you about standing firm, and I'll bring you back to that point in a minute. It goes to negotiations. I showed these last month because I had a total of five of them. I I sold four of them last month for between uh, 100 and 135 dollars. So I sold I, I sold this one this month, the beginning. I think it was April 9th, and I saved it for the end because this is the only one that had a little cosmetic damage to the front. You can see there on the bottom. There's just a small little uh, rip, but still wind up getting a hundred dollars for it. If you're not familiar with this, it's called Dragon's Altar, and there's a little uh, ball that goes on top of this little dais there, and there's like a little coin piece there. And then you put the um, uh, this like empty tube like right on top of it, and then when you take it off, magically the ball goes through the coin and into the bottom of the box, and everyone's like, "Wow, how did that happen?" And so you know you've got to of course study magic to be able to figure that out. But a couple things I want to point out to you: vintage magic stuff sells, and you also need to be aware of the brand name Tenyo T N Y O. You could see it there on the bottom. Uh, but if you go on the um, the, the first uh, part, like right here at the, at the uh, front of it, you're going to not see the word Tenyo in English. It's right there in uh, Japanese. Yes, I do speak and read fluent Japanese. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. But uh, that, that's got to be what that says right there. Now, I can tell you it's unpunched. That little circular uh, spot right there, right above the red ball, That's that would normally have popped out and have gone on a peg in a store when it hung up on a shelf. But so if it's if it's a vintage piece like this that's valuable, being unpunched is something you would want uh, to mention somewhere. And I believe I did mention that somewhere. Uh, yeah, you can see right here, it's unpunched. So mention that. Now, by the way, I did have someone contact me recently. They had a modern item or a relatively modern item that was really overproduced and it was unpunched. And they asked me if that meant that it would be valuable. No, unpunched means absolutely nothing unless it's a vintage hard to find piece if it's a common piece everyone has it doesn't matter no one's going to care that it's unpunched so it only adds value in the situation i just mentioned uh so be on the lookout for this now this uh, again was my last piece and for those of you who have been following me for a while long time prime timers you know it is one of my strategies but we've got so many new people coming in i want to just make sure i mention this uh this is one of my leverage techniques my psychological leverage techniques that i like to use i say note this is my last one left 
if you watch it, you are going to watch it go to someone else. So you want to make sure you have the leverage. You're the one who knocks, uh, in the words of uh, Walter White from Breaking Bad, for all you Breaking Bad fa- fans out there. You know, you want to show that you know if someone's going to even think of lowballing you, that they really shouldn't, because you know the value, and you are going to wait until someone comes along to buy it for the price that you know you know it should go for, because you've had a bunch of them in the past. You know, you're also kind of conveying that here like you know you're you know sometimes people try to test you they try to send you an offer just to see do you really know what this is worth and that's why sometimes people send you something that's a low offer when you put something like that there last one you're already telling them you've sold these before so that is um you know something that could be uh, real important and uh, kind of influential uh, during a negotiation um this is uh just i showed this last month but this is the box that i found these in uh, these um, these were not free. These were the first day that I went there, but I wound up getting. I mean, I had such an amazing haul from this house. I got so much stuff. Everything I got from that from that house, everything. I mean, remember all the books that I got, all the magic books, everything. The total for everything that day was a hundred dollars. I made that just selling, made that all back just selling one of those dragon altars things. So that there they are right there, stacked up. That thing, that that right there was just alone a killer. And I still have all that other stuff from that sale. Um, some of it I've sold off, but some of them not. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, many of you know, follow my channel that I am uh, uh, someone who specializes in comic books. I always have comic books uh, in my store. Go check it out if you're interested in comics. But this is a really interesting title. Many of you know Roy Rogers uh, from. Uh, from the restaurant that's named after his name, but he was a famous cowboy figure. My dad, uh, he loved Roy Rogers as a kid, so famous Western guy. And there's still an audience out there for him. Um, you know, many of those people are passing away now, but uh, there still is a you know an audience that collects them. But it's one of those interesting titles because it's one of these things that if you find a Roy Rogers comic book, you know, unless you found the first issue or second issue, something like that, they generally don't sell in small amounts, like one or two or three. But if you find them in bulk, you really could make a nice sale on them. This goes back to, um, I've talked about it so many times, but the estate sale and the, and the barn and the uh, basically that attic area of the barn, I found all these golden age comic books or mostly golden age comic books, so 40s and 50s or early 50s, mid 50s. And um, you know, just got a great deal. I wound up getting these for like 10 to 15 cents each. Uh, sold this lot of 31 of them for uh, $113 dollars and 50 cents is the offer that we wound up negotiating back and forth so really happy with that Uh, a couple things to point out to you as well is that with these older books uh, from the 40s and 50s even if they have damage on it like this uh, they could still sell especially if they still have a basic bright color to it and the main part of the photo is still really visible or whatever the art is on the cover is you know will still display well um so even if there's little corner chips or bends or creases or color loss or or anything like that indentations it'll still it'll still sell um remember too that again this goes back to what i was saying before make that first impression count right i'm not just putting one roy rogers comic up when i have a total of 31 of them like that and i see people do that and i just shake my head and i don't get it i mean you really want to just highlight the put the main part of what it is the main thing show try to show the main thing all of it at once right there and then in your subsequent pictures it's just like the wizard of oz uh you know item that i showed you then you could break things down into the component parts so again you know you only get a one chance to make that first impression so really really uh, make that one count all right so let's go over here uh what's our next item our next item is the indiana jones infernal machine piece now some of you may remember this this was um a little bit more recent uh, than that tapestry we started off with uh this was at the flea market you could see here i wound up picking up these toys and uh, we had an edward scissorhands and we got three indiana jones pieces now all of these things plus the um Infernal Machines paid him twenty-five dollars for these toys is because it included this piece right here, which is incredible. Uh, I've never I can make all my money back uh, for 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 everything here uh, just just by selling those toys off, and that's what I did. I made well more than twenty-five dollars my purchase price. So my goal was to make this Indiana Jones piece a pure profit piece. 
and um, now went back and forth with someone for quite a while. He was a um, he really actually is uh, considered the biggest collector of Indiana Jones stuff in the United States and possibly even the world. Uh, and I knew he really wanted this piece, and so again, like we went back and forth a little bit, but I wound up selling it to him for a hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, now um, you could see there I had it for one forty, but again, I, I I really did consider you know, and he sent me proof of who he was and everything, and I said this this is something that needs to go to this guy he knew he had to pay up a little bit for it uh but i was willing to take a little bit off for him and um you know he was concerned about how it was going to be shipped and i said listen this is where your reputation helps you i said look at my feedback 100 percent feedback look at what people say about my shipping i said this thing's going to come bulletproof to you it is not going to get damaged and sure enough if you see his feedback for me on this piece the guy was thrilled and he said it's going to go in a real place of honor in his place so that really meant a lot to me i was glad to see that's one of the fun things about uh, re selling is getting things back to places where they were getting them in the hands of people who really, really would cherish them. Uh, now, uh, so, so cool piece. Let me tell you just a little bit, just real quickly. If you never heard about the infernal uh, machine, uh, title, you're like, what is that a movie or what is that? Well, no, it's actually is a video game came out in 1999, 2000 for uh, multiple different platforms, Nintendo 64. Um, it was also uh, for Game Boy. It came out on, I think came out also on PC in 99. Uh, so, it was a mediocre game, but the thing is, is that Indiana Jones items in general, if they're vintage, they are going to sell. And especially if they're quite scarce. And you're just not going to really find another one of these out there too often. Uh, I've never seen one before. Um, the guy who's the world's largest or... Uh, world's biggest or whatever united states biggest uh, indiana jones collector the guy doesn't have one and he and he was he was going back and forth with me for a while on it and so uh you know if he doesn't have one that just goes to show you how, how scarce it is so uh anyway um it, it's it's a cool piece anything indiana jones definitely definitely be on the lookout for anything infernal machine uh, if you actually find the video game if you ever found it for example it would be hard to find sealed but if you did find it sealed like nintendo 64 infernal machine sealed that's going to be uh, hundreds of dollars right there hundreds of dollars even if you if you find it outside of the box you know you're still going to be able to you know maybe turn like a hundred bucks uh just or, you know something like that you know something close to a hundred um if you have like the you know so many accessories like the instructions and stuff it kind of partly depend on condition too um so you know minimum you should be able to get like 50 bucks just out of like just the game itself with nothing else uh with it so uh definitely be on the lookout for that piece all right next one here this is uh, a cool piece. This is an, uh, a nice art piece. Uh, this is an incredible Hulk one, and it's interesting. It's not like my normal stuff that you normally see me show, um, which I'm showing, um, you know, like signed art prints. This is a little bit different. This was, again, something I purchased from the estate. It was a private estate sale pick uh, that I did. It was uh, from someone who collected uh, high-end um, uh, art and high-end comic books, and so I wound up getting all sorts of stuff. Believe it or not, I actually got this for like a few cents because there was this room that had all this art in it and the state sale dealer was just like listen i can't have this state sale unless you clear this stuff out for me so just take all that art put it in that in this big folder and just take it and just get it out of here and so that was just like that one folder filled with art was just one of many things that i wound up picking up for like a big bulk deal uh, at the end of the day so i mean there, there had to have been like a hundred or more pieces of art in this thing it was crazy and this was one of the pieces now there's an acetone overlay on this in which you'll see that there's a uh, some signatures on the bottom from people who are involved in the book you've got the, pretty much the most famous comic book artist there to the left george perez who signed it you've got colorist uh, tom smith and we've got peter david uh, with the signature there as well uh, what you'll see here is that we do have the original watercolor for this so that is really cool i mean you really have like a nice there's something to it that's original now we don't have the original drawing that's not there so we kind of have like this print here but still you know to have the three signatures on there so it's triple sign on the bottom and to have the original a uh, watercolor art that is cool i had like 16 watchers on this thing it was crazy uh wound up selling for 185 dollars really nice piece little tip for you if you ever came across something like this like at an estate pick even if you're not into comic books and you're just saying to yourself wow this is cool you know i it would really be helpful if i could say what scene this came from what book it came from or whatever 
even if you don't know this stuff, you could just go into a comic book collecting group, you could put a picture of it in there, and someone there will be a big Incredible Hulk fan and will immediately know where this was from, and they will tell you, and then you can put that type of stuff into your listing. So that's just a little tip for you, for those of you who are not really into comic books that much. And remember, if there's any question, make sure that you put here that is like that there's something important you think someone want and it's not there. Say it's not there. So this item does not include the original drawing. You can see there I bolded it. I want to make sure they absolutely knew that because if they're paying up for it and they get it and there and I leave it out. If I know it and leave it out and then tell the person later, well, you should have looked at the pictures and figured it out that way. No, spell it out. It's just going to cause you a lot of grief otherwise because they're going to force the return on you and it's just going to be a big headache and you're going to wind up losing money on it. So just make sure you get it to someone is going to be out there who's going to want it. Just make sure you put all the caveats, all the qualifications, if there's any damage, anything like that, make sure you mention it. Don't leave it up to the to the buyer to figure it all out because they won't, Not, not at least not all the time. You've got to spell it out for them. All right, let's go to the last uh, two. And I did do a video on these two pieces of would be number nine well not number nine it's number two and number one uh depends on which way you want to count but i did a video on this uh about uh, reselling exclusives not a lot of people watched it because uh, on my channel it's a, a reselling channel and i don't know what it is it could be about uh, youtube the way youtube sees my channel they don't really see my channel as a comic book channel so whenever i do comic book stuff it doesn't really push it out that much on the algorithm uh, and or it could be that people just aren't all that interested in it but uh you know this is a way that you can make money i'm telling you, you can make big big money this way uh, this item right here, this is Chamber of Chills number 18. Now, I paid up for this. This is part of my strategy uh, this year of going out and paying up bigger uh, amounts of money to get important issues. Uh, and these issues are ones that are s- the single highest graded in the world. In other words, uh, just watch my show that I did a couple of nights ago with Gem Mint uh, from Gem Mint Collectibles, where I interviewed him and we talk about this. This is the grading of the comic book, the certification. It gets into this nice plastic slab. And you can see here, uh, we've got a great grade here of, uh, of 9.8. So, uh, this is a near mint to mint uh, a book right here, and this book has never been graded uh, and by a 9.8 by anyone else who ever submitted it or anything higher than that. So it is the highest grade for the book, and that alone sets it apart from other books. So you know, even if you buy things where there are limited editions, like I just put something up today. It was a piece of uh, art uh, by. Um, it was by Michael Turner, uh, who passed away. Uh, so I put that up today. Now, there's not many of them around. There's 100, and it was number 75 of 100, but there's still 99 other ones. There's no other one like this. And when there's no other one like something, if it's something desirable, you could really, really start to push up the price on these types of things. So this one here, uh, purchased it for $212. That includes everything. That includes um, you know, any shipping fees. I got it at an auction. So it includes auction fees, everything. That's the total fee, everything, $212. Uh, and I wound up selling it for $575. Uh, things I like to look for in these types of comic books are, are types of horror, adventure types of books, something with a big monster on it. Now, I, I do get other comic books outside of that, but these things I really love to zoom in on uh, and try to find because, you know, if, if you want to go beyond this and go to the next step, you're really starting to talk about like some of the classic superheroes like Spider-Man and Superman and, and and Captain America and Thor and if you're trying to get you know comics of that caliber that are single highest graded that are really old uh, the prices are going to be way way higher than anything I'm talking about here so this is kind of a good place to kind of get your feet wet and and and, and kind of enter into the market uh, with this type of stuff so you got to be on the lookout for high-end auctions that sell off these kind of things I mentioned heritage as, as one example of a place that would uh, sell something like this uh, this is uncanny tales uh, this is a 9.8 uh, this is number two I purchased this one for $264. Again, that's my total 
fee for every single thing, every little extra fee that gets tacked on everything, totaled 264 and sold it for $700. So that is a great return on investment there. Very happy with it. You could see, you know, I had it for $799.99, but you know, I, I put that price up there on purpose. So I have a little bit of room for negotiation. And sometimes people will just come in and they'll buy it for that price. So you never know. But you know, when I could, you know, take a $264 purchase, flip it for $700, I'll do that all day. Again, you could see the same kind of thing here in which we have like it's similar to the one I just showed you. Even the coloring, you know, the red and the yellow, the the creepy kind of um, cal you know calligraphy that's kind of going on there, the font. Um, you've got the monster kind of creeping into the picture. You've got um, you know two people who are kind of fearful trying to kind of get away. Very similar. Uh, this one's 1974. This one's 1975. So. Uh, really cool pieces. Um, excited to uh, share all of those with you. Some of which are, are, are some repetitions uh, from other videos, but again, not everyone watches every video. Uh, so it's good to go over these things. If you want to learn more about that, uh, I do have a video down here somewhere called, here it is right here, uh, how to resell exclusives for big bucks. You can see only 753. Watch that compared to some of the other uh, videos, but go check it out if you want to learn more about it. I not only in that video talk about uh, reselling comics as exclusives, Exclusives, but I also talk about some other places and some other types of items that you could do this with besides comic books. So go check out that video uh, if you are interested. Well, uh, I hope that you enjoyed the top 10 list. It was fun to go through it uh, this month. Uh, thanks for all the support. Uh, I've had a lot of subscribers uh, coming over in the last few weeks, a lot of videos that have done well. So I'm real happy and thankful for that. We're almost at 13,000 subscribers. You could see there, 12.9. So hopefully it'll be there uh, maybe tomorrow or by the time you're watching uh, this video or maybe later on in the day. But um, one of the things I found out today going through my data uh, and I don't normally go through my analytics too much on YouTube, but I'm paying a lot more attention to it now, uh, is that I found out, believe it or not, half of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. The other half, literally 50%, are not subscribed. So if you're watching this as a creator, I am asking you to subscribe to the channel because we put a lot of time and effort, not just me, anyone else whose videos you watch that you like, because it's really the only way that, well, not the only way, there, there's other ways, but it's a main way, it's a very important way to let YouTube know that you enjoy the content on the channel besides hitting the like button, and that helps them decide which videos they're going to push out and which ones they're going to suggest and recommend. Uh, and that ultimately helps support the channel because the more people who come to the channel, um, you know, the more people will see the videos. And if the videos are monetized, that helps us out uh, as well and helps keep us going. Because when we're making videos, we're not listing and, you know, we're not, you know, making sales. And that, well, we might make some sales, but we're not listing new stuff. So, uh, you know, just, just keep that in mind. Uh, subscriptions, super, super important to support your favorite uh, resellers, your favorite YouTube. YouTube channels again not just me but but everyone else so go ahead hit that subscribe button hit that like button make sure you hit the bell icon up top for notifications that will let you know when I go live um, that's important as well I saw only 13% of people have that notified so make sure you get that notified so this will make sure that you you know don't forget when I have a live show uh, so that's important as well I like to get those live show numbers up like to get new people in I have got a a uh, giveaway, by the way, that I announced today, and you've got to come over to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, uh, to be involved in it. I actually posted it on my community tab, uh, which you could see, uh, I think right here, if it will pop up. Let's see if it'll come up. Um, this is going to be a big giveaway. So this is going to be on my live show on May 20th. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to give away three things. So you, there's a $100 Amazon gift card a customized mystery box that's customized to the type of things that you like, you know, as opposed to me just sending you a bunch of random stuff that you're not going to care about. Uh, and I'm also going to give away a position for support that seller Sunday, which I rarely give that away. Uh, so that one is one where 17,000 people in the Facebook group are asked to go buy from you. And typically, I mean, there's no guarantees, but typically the average person who partakes in that winds up making several hundred dollars of sales in one day, as high as $550 in one day for one uh, person. The last person who just went up last week made over $400, like $430 or so uh, in sales. So it's absolutely amazing. The community really gets behind it in the group. 
uh, and all the instructions. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything to get in the group or to get into the giveaway. It's my way to thank you uh, for supporting me. So it's a reciprocal road. So I do appreciate each and every one of you. Try to respond and read to every single one of your comments. Uh, so I always appreciate those as well, your questions, all that, all those sorts of things. So thanks a lot for coming by, uh, watching this video. Uh, all the links to Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff down below in the description section. I'll see you all at the next video, everyone. Take care.